Hi guys, this is Julian from Eat the Blocks, and today we're going to continue our series on how to build a to-do list decentralized application on Ethereum. This is a part of a series of already five video published. So if you are just getting started on this series, I recommend you to start the series from the very beginning. I will put the links to the other videos in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss any other tutorial on how to build decentralized application on Ethereum. In the last episode of this series, we used Web3 to set up a basic infrastructure to communicate with the blockchain from the front end. That's useful, but Web3 only allows to hit the native APIs of Ethereum. In this tutorial, we will use the Truffle contract npm package to pass our smart contract and build a JavaScript object capable of calling the function of our smart contract. Under the hood, Truffle contract will still use Web3 to transport requests to the Ethereum blockchain. We're going to start from where we stopped at the last video. So for this, you need to clone the repository of it the blocks on GitHub. So if you haven't done so before, you basically will need to do a git clone plus the address of the repo. And then once this is done, then you will need to go to the special episode one folder. And in a special episode one folder, you will see a, a subfolder called step four. And so we will need to copy this folder to a new folder step 4 new folder called step 5 and now I have step 5 okay the first thing we're going to do is to fix the version of web3 because unfortunately I realized that the recent version of web3 is not compatible with the recent version of truffle contract so we will need to downgrade web3 so first let's go to our folder so it's step 5 and then we're going to execute an install command with npm, so npm install web3, and then we specify the exact version, so 0, 19, 0. And actually, I want to save this in the dev dependency of my package.json, so I specify the, the uppercase D flag, and I press enter. Oh, 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 I forgot something. Okay, I forgot this three here. Web3, okay, let's do it again. Okay, so now we have Web3. So I clear my screen and um, now let's overwrite the Web3 file that we saved during the last video. So for this, we're going to copy what we have in node module Web3 dist Web3 min. And we're going to copy this into app vendor. And since we downgraded Web3, we also have to fix something in the code. So let's go to our JavaScript file. And in our JavaScript file, we here, uh, we directly instantiate Web3, but actually that's only in the new version of Web3, but in the old version, you have to actually uh, instantiate another object. So you have to uh, access Web3, and here Web3 has a an entry called HTTP pro provider and, uh, and add a parenthesis here. Oops. And finally, uh, this time I want to use the Truffle Develop Console. So the port is not going to be 8545, but it's going to be 9545. So here we change the port. And no, actually, no, something is wrong. Yes. Here's providers, and here is uppercase HTTP. Let's now install Truffle contract. So back to the command line, and we're going to execute another npm command. So npm install still with the D flag. And this time we're going to install the Truffle contract package. And the specific version we're going to install is 301. Okay. And now, exactly like we did for uh, web3.min.js, uh, we're going to copy over the minify version of Truffle contract into our app folder. So uh, we're going to copy from node module Truffle contract, and then 
in this directory truffle contract dot mean is gonna go in a vendor directory next to web dot mean dot js. Okay, so now we should have both files. Yeah. And um, now we need to load this in the HTML file. So let's do this. At the bottom of the HTML file, just below where we load Web3.js, we also going to load Truffle contract. Truffle contract dot mean dot js by the way the old version of the truffle contract we are using come from a repo that has been discontinued so under the truffle suite organization on github there is a repo called truffle contract and truffle contract used to be on this repo but now it's been moved to the the main repo of truffle under the packages directory following a decision of the truffle team to adopt a mono repo approach um, so you probably wouldn't shouldn't need to, to, to go there but just uh, just for information like don't be confused if, if you google truffle contract and, and you see that it's in two different location uh, there is a reason for that so now we need to import the compile artifact of our smart contract into our javascript file so the first thing we're going to do is to start truffle develop so we open a new terminal and then we execute in the root of the project truffle develop so it's going to start a local development blockchain it's uh, something that i've explained many times in, in previous videos so if you're not familiar with this check out previous videos and um, once you are in the truffle develop console with your blockchain started then you need to deploy your smart contract so for this you just execute the migrate command okay so now you can go back to the previous terminal window and we're going to copy over um, the content of the the compile artifact so this is a file in a directory called build that was just created with the migrate command that also compiled the contract before the migration and there is another directory called contract and then our smart contract is called to do dot source so the compile artifact is to do dot json uh, and then we're going to copy everything in this file so i use some vimfu but otherwise you will need to scroll down a lot because that's a big file and uh, we're going now to copy this into our main JavaScript file. So that's app index uh, dot, uh, oh, it's in JS, index dot JS, okay. And I'm going to copy everything that I loaded before. Okay, uh, and so there is one thing that you need to check. So go to the very bottom of your file and there is a network ski. And in this network ski, it should not be empty. You should see something like me with an address and a transaction hash. Yeah. If you don't see anything in networks, it probably means that you copy over th this file without migrating um, so you should migrate first and copy the file after so this network key is populated. Um, I realized that this solution of copying over the JSON into the, the index.js is not very elegant. Uh, but this is just temporary it's because it's the most simple thing to do. In the next video, we will improve on that. Don't worry. So now we're going to create what we call a contract abstraction. So a contract abstraction is a generic object that knows about the functions of a specific smart contract and can create contract instances. So let's use a truffle contract abstraction using the JSON object that we just imported. We will also set the Web3 provider because uh, later when we will create a contract instance, this Web3 provider will be the transport used to communicate with the blockchain. 
A contract abstraction only knows about the function of a smart contract, but it cannot communicate with any deploy instance of a smart contract. For this, we need a contract instance. We will create a contract instance using the contract abstraction we just created and the address of the deploy smart contract. First thing, we need to find the address of the deploy instance of our smart contract on the blockchain. So for this, we will use the compile artifact that we imported into our JavaScript file before. One of the entry of the JSON object contains all the addresses of the deploy instances of the smart contract. So let's grab the address of the first deploy smart contract. So network equals object keys of artifact networks and we're going to take the first entry and then we'll be able to grab the address uh, with artifact.networks and then we're going to use the, the key that we just found before, so network and then it's indexed as the, as the address key. And then we're going to use this address to create a contract instance. So let's reuse the variable abstraction that we created before and we're going to execute the at method and it's going to take the, the uh, address as an argument. So we're going to use the address we, we just created. And we're going to have a contract instance that we're going to reference with the to-do variable and we're going to console log this. Um, and then we will want to check that it works. So for this, you need to open a new terminal window and start the Node.js server that will serve the front end with npm start. And once it has started, you can load the front end in a new browser tab at uh, localhost uh, column 3000 and then open the JavaScript console of your browser and you should see something similar to what I have on my screen. So once you've checked that it works properly, you can delete the console log statement. All right, so the final thing we will do is test that we can actually call the method of our smart contract with our contract instance. So let's delete the console log statement and we're going to call a function this read only needs get task IDs and uh, then we're going to have a promise and so here we'll have the task IDs and we're going to console log this And then let's go back to uh, the front end. And so I'm going to reload this and open the JavaScript console. And task ID is not defined. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I put an S here. Okay, let's reload. And here we can see that we have an empty array. So that's what we are expecting because there is no task in a smart contract. So it's working, yeah. In the next video, we will refactor our code with ES67 and Webpack and, uh, and Babel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more tutorial on how to build a decentralized application. I recently, I've also started a newsletter on eattheblocks.com. So this is a weekly newsletter where I send 10 links about the most interesting things for Ethereum DApp developers. So make sure to subscribe as well if you want to receive some news. And I'll see you in my next videos. Bye, guys.